In December of 2010, I saw footage of a game that was, though admittedly barebones, something that I knew I'd be seeing again later. A world of infinite Lego, one that didn't call you a kid for playing with blocks. Inspiring immense creativity, this is one purchase I simply couldn't resist. Eleven years later, Minecraft persists to be the group staple, a game that almost all my good friends can play together despite enjoying wildly different genres. An MMO player, an RTS player, and me, a first-person shooter player, form this motley crew of individuals who strengthen their friendship, dwelling in a world of grid-ordered cuboids. Through the lens of psychoanalytic theory, I have been tasked with observing my personal connection with Minecraft in reference to three elements of Shell's Tetrad. Part A will be on Group Unity, why so many different picky people would play the same game. And Part B will be observing a self-discovery, born from the ruins of my social life during the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic. When I ponder the significance of Minecraft in my life, I feel the most prominent contribution the game has made is facilitating the growth, evolution, and continuation of friendships. Any friend group faces a wall of general disagreement when playing games together. Genre. With an MMORPG player, an RTS player, and me, with an FPS player, all gathered in a group, never have the three of us unanimously agreed on a game to repeatedly play. That is, unless the game is Minecraft. So, why? In previous years, I would have attempted to explain this using Bartle's taxonomy, a rigid but convincing categorization of player objectives and how this influences the games that they play. When making this categorization, however, I feel the theory pins the blame of genre conflict on the player, which has always felt wrong. Additionally, it would be hard to find a player that isn't a hybrid of types. How can an explorer achiever explain the want to socialize as they play? Instead, the theory of Barbaro's six needs, a similarly categoric concept of repeatedly fulfilled criteria, offers a more dynamic lens to peer through. We can now see how Minecraft utilizes Barbaro's six needs with expert finesse, not the harsh focus suggested by Bartle's taxonomy. These six needs are materialism, power, affiliation, achievement, information, and sensual. In terms of our group, an MMORPG game involves affiliation and achievement. RTS would involve power and information, and FPS involves power and achievement. Interestingly, my role is fluid, and I am capable of enjoying either of these friends' preferences as the theory suggests. Knowing this, it becomes clear that Minecraft focuses on each of the six needs individually. It's often turbulent phases of play, reintroducing needs previously satiated. In the beginning, players spawn as a dominated entity, the likes of skeletons for example, able to kill from a range with ease. To compete, the player must mine, construct a house, and craft weapons. Having now progressed through four Barbaro's six needs, this newfound sense of establishment permits in-game recreation, the ability to calmly socialize, and view the game aesthetically, before reinforcing the need to mine, construct, and continue to craft. By alternating through these needs, Minecraft has the potential to offer a balanced yet tame experience for each of the members in our group. In the multiplayer context, this would imply that players have socialized for hours over group calls, in-game activities, and bonded over a shared existence, a connection that persists regardless of real-world limitations. Despite occurring in a video game, this social contact is an incredibly pervasive experience. Carl Jung's theory of introverts and extroverts is a commonly deceptive concept focused on where one attains intellectual and creative energy. As a paper by Corey and Good Boy concisely states, extroverts are predisposed to obtain stimulation from external sources, particularly social sources. In comparison, introverts are capable of obtaining similar stimulation from internal sources and privacy. An introvert can still be outgoing, friendly, and engaging, and an extrovert can be quiet, unobtrusive, and nervous. Additionally, this concept exists on a spectrum. One might not be in complete alignment with one title or the other. As it turns out, a prime example is myself. I've come to the conclusion that despite my low tone of voice, aversion to communicating with unmet people, my predisposed nerves when asking for something or providing an open answer, I am, myself, an extrovert who finds it hard to be creative in the absence of communication. Which begs the question, how does an extrovert source energy in times when communication is impractical, in times such as the COVID-19 pandemic? 
I personally feel that the year of 2020 was the moment when Minecraft as a social conduit became clear. During this time, I gained two new friends. People introduced to me by another friend, the aforementioned RTS player. These are people I'd never met face to face, and thus our social bonding for that year took the form of voice chats and Minecraft until lockdown restrictions began to lift. In this sense, an entire friendship was built over playing Minecraft, and I, personally, began to find lockdown a lot more bearable. Scholars have suggested that introverts use media to facilitate, rather than to replace, social interaction. Indeed, Minecraft hardly proved a replacement for personal interaction. By limiting communication to messages, voice calls, and Minecraft, a lot of our group interaction initially began in the form of in-game house tours, voiced appreciation or admiration for in-game elements, or openly chatting about ourselves and recent events whilst enjoying the game socially. But by December of 2020, when I met these two people face to face for the first time, it became clear that the only things that suffered from purely online communication were placing a face to the name and, well, remembering names. This is hardly the first friendship that was reinforced through Minecraft's collaborative and social gameplay, although it is the first good friendship I've had that started purely through a video game. Prior to this assignment, I'd believe that I played Minecraft with friends simply because it's a game we all share enjoyment for. And while this is indeed correct, I suppose I hadn't the definitions, nor the tools, to understand why we all kept returning to it. As an aspiring game designer, I've tried many a time to break down why we can all agree on Minecraft and not another game, or why the game has been a featured and reliable staple within a majority of my most secure friend groups. Although I cannot analyse the experience of my friends, as I am not them, nor can I see things the exact same way, I have managed to come to this personal conclusion. Minecraft's gameplay focus offers little specific experience. Its approach to inclusive multiplayer design, and the way it mixes up one's needs, and the artistic and personal expression inherent in the game's building system, makes it an endlessly repeatable and inherently communicative conduit for self-expression and group communication. Over the 11 years of playing Minecraft, I've had multiple friend groups bond through playing the game, and as previously stated, a good majority of my best friends have also played Minecraft with me.